Hey everybody, welcome back. I am working on a new flower bed this morning. I'm really excited this is a flower bed I've been wanting to put in for like three, three years at this point. Um, I was all ready with my plants. I've got all these plants back here on the table that I was gonna put in this new flower bed. And then we had this tree disaster happen when the microburst went through the yard and it landed all over here. Miles has been pulling big piles of chopped up tree out of here all morning. So my yard is tore up. It's really, really tore up, but which is fine because we are having, here's the building in the background for reference. Everything behind this tree is kind of a hill and it's higher than the building. So all the water runs off, oh, runs the other way. Everything in the camera is backwards in case you've never noticed, but uh, all the water runs off the hill towards the building, which is a problem. So we're having a guy come with a big piece of equipment and he's going to kind of take some of the dirt off of this hill and bank the building so that the water runs towards the canyon instead of down in the building foundation, which is going to mean that he will start over here behind the lilac bush and he will come right around this corner, cut across the yard here where this tree will no longer be since it's coming down now. We were gonna go around it when it was okay, but it's not okay anymore, so it's coming down. And he will go right under the tree where the tree will not be anymore and off the cliff over there to make it better. So, this flower bed going in right here, which is just kind of bad timing out of all the years that I could have started this project. It's of course just a little bit bad timing, but I think it's going to be okay. You enjoying your haircut? Happy dog. It's going to be okay because the piece of equipment actually won't come anywhere near this. And I have got to put my plants in the ground because they are dying in the house. It's either dying from hail and wind outside or dying on the kitchen table in the house. So I'm going to go with outside because they actually have a chance out here. Um, we're forecasted for hail this weekend, yet again. We've already had three rounds of hail, a microburst, and weeks and weeks of wind, and several inches of rain. So it's not exactly planting conducive, but we're going to give this a shot. So my initial thought here, there's so much stuff that's collected inside the lilac bushes. And I'm putting in a new fence here. I'm going to do like a short picket fence on the inside of the log instead of the wire. It'll look so much prettier. That is why the wire is saggy right there. Yep. And I'm going to do a little swoop here. I'm just going to swoop in. Go, go. And then swoop out. Go on. It's not for you. Go. Go. Go on. So it's going to swoop around this corner. It's going to do a little swoop there kind of a little bump and it's gonna bump out and in and out and go out and around this corner, which we're not going to do yet because a big piece of equipment is gonna come right through here, but it will go out here nice and big. And I'm gonna plant some kind of a Japanese maple or maybe a small evergreen or both there. But I've got a really pretty array of plants to put in here and I'm excited about it. Are you helping? I have a feeling you're going to be very less helpful here in a minute. Yeah. Run for it, ducky! Back out to your puddle. This side. Come. Yes. 
You are a puddle duck, not a flower bed duck. So I had a few minutes to throw these plants in the ground. I didn't set up my camera because I lost the piece that holds my phone to my camera stand. Um, so until I get a new one of those, there's going to be a lot less actual real good footage. <laughs> but um, the footage with me busy in it anyway, I can hold the camera. That's one thing, but not having it clipped to the camera stand is a whole nother. Let me show you what we got going here. All right. So here's the supplies I used. I used Espoma Organic Plant Tone. And I also used this. And I have been using different kinds of this kind of thing. Um, repellent for rabbit, dog, cat. Um, I usually just buy whatever's cheapest. Because it really actually does work, but it is expensive. And anytime I have a new flower bed, something like this, the animals think I put it there for them. Like I went um, over to the other house for lunch today before I did any of this. And the duck had come in and made a huge hole looking for worms. So this stuff is really strong. Usually it is like a hot pepper based. So it makes their noses and eyes water before they even get anywhere near it. And if they actually get it on them, they will remember it's there. But it makes my eyes water from clear over here. But I've got mums here, here, and here. Daisies, which are looking really wilty, but hopefully they'll come out of it. There's a mum back there. There are three poppies. A delphinium, which is blue. These are little annual salvias. I've got a drift of one, two, three, four, five, six. A perennial salvia back there, which is also purple. Two mums here. And this beautiful Proven Winners Rose, which I might have to add some iron tone to it. But it is the OSO Easy Lemon Zest Landscape Rose, so it's not going to get real big. I do believe it's four by five. Two by three. Two to three feet tall and wide. So that'll fill in really nicely right there. And hopefully the rest of these get to feeling better. They've had a rough go. We'll get some blocks or some pavers or some something to do around the edge. I'm really excited to see them grow on. Need some sunshine. Hey y'all, welcome back. A little update video for ya. Um, it is the first day of June. That's what it is. And I am out in front of the house, the front flower bed cleaning up this flower bed. I usually let all my tulips die back on their own, let all that nutrition go back into the bulb so that I get a good perennializing, whoa, that's a hard word to say right now. Um, so the nutrition goes back into the bulb so that they will continue to um, make more tulips and come back each year. But I got a severe hailstorm last week, I think. And it just, it really damaged them hard. And then we've had two rounds of rain since then and no sunshine, no real heat. So everything is looking really bad. So I decided today I was going to go in and clip all the tulips back and I will just um, make up for that nutrition loss with some Espoma bulb tome in the fall. And I am really, really glad that I decided to do this because I wanted to do an update, update y'all on the pine cones because I started using pine cones as mulch last fall because I was having a very big dilemma, big problem with the animals trashing my flower bed. Um, no matter what I put up, they were just laying it. The cats were using it as a litter box. The dog was digging in it. The duck was thinking it was the best place in the world to ever find worms. And they were just completely devastating my flower bed. So I decided that I wanted to lay pine cones um, all in the flower bed because I have a surplus of those around here. And it worked beautifully. And it was gorgeous all winter long. It made for some serious winter interest. I loved it. But now that it's spring, I wanted to pull a few and see what the situation was if I was growing a bunch of pine trees or if I was having a mold issue or if everything was just fine and dandy or what was going on. And what I have discovered, let me flip this. So down here I have got all of these cut back and the pine cones removed. They're over here in the wheel bow. Um, I started removing them on this end, the cutting back the tulips because I was noticing I had some beautiful plants and this is what it looked like in between 
This is what the whole bed looked like? Okay, so what I am noticing is that I have some seriously wet soil. I have not watered this bed at all this spring and it is just saturated to the point that it is growing mold. It's growing mold on the pine needles, it's growing mold on the mulch, it's growing mold everywhere. And that is just because we haven't had any heat. We haven't had any sunshine to speak of yet this spring. And I wanted to <laughs> cut everything back away from my plants because my hostas are starting to grow. I have no idea what this is. It came from my mom's yard and I just cannot remember what the name of it is. Got some little weeds here growing in the bottom. I just planted these. Um, I've got some sedum growing. I love sedum. Here's a little fire and ice hosta. These are just little violas. But down here, I don't know if y'all remember the video we did about this corner last fall, but I've got some really pretty plants. This here is a berry poppins, um, coral berry, I think. Um, I don't remember what, this is a cotton candy something. I'll put it up on the screen when I can find it. And then this is a black pearl hookra. Yeah, I do believe that's correct. They have the really beautiful leaves. In the fall, they turn dark purple under the leaves. But I, so I scooted all the pine cones back away from them for now because I want them to get some air. I had them packed in here so tightly that they, they're not getting any air. And you can see, even see the pine cones are all closed up. There isn't, they're so wet that they're not opening up but need some sunshine. So I think the verdict is, is that I really like the pine cones as mulch. It has all of the, it's doing all the things I wanted it to do. It's keeping the animals out of it. It was really pretty and it protected the soil all winter, but I think it's going to be one of those things that if I'm going to continue to do it, I'm going to have to pull them in the, in the spring, just like I am doing right now. Cause I, I have to go through and cut back all of my tulips manually anyway. So pulling the pine cones out is really no big deal. And I think I will lay them out, let them dry in the sun, and then put them in bags or buckets or something and store them till uh, fall yet again and do it again. I think that they were the perfect solution to the problem, but they are not something that I need in there all summer. They're going to take up space around all the plants that I want to have in there. And right now all the plants really need some air and some sunshine. So that is my verdict on the pine cones and a little update on the front flower bed. I hope you guys are having a great day. We've already got two rainstorms today and uh, just this, this is the first amount of sunshine we've had today, but it's been a really nice day. So I hope you guys are having a good day too. Bye. kitchen window. Fancy and uh, Siamese kitten are here on the floor next to me. Uh, we're watching it hail. Got another one of these crazy bad storms going on and I've got golf ball sized hail. We might as well just say goodbye to the garden and all the pretty plants we've planted in the last couple weeks because it is just not working out. It's a losing battle. Hi guys. I asked Fancy if she wanted in. She wanted in. She never wants in. Not even when it's 20 below outside. She does not want to come in the house. She wanted inside this time. <laughs> Smart dog. That kitten chewing on you. Kind of looks like the kitten's chewing on you. She's got her claws too, doesn't she? You're so patient. You're so patient. Hey, be nice. You need to chew on fancy. Lay right, right down. The kitten just wants to be friends.
really nailed the potatoes. Raspberries are doing okay-ish. Oh, looky here. We got us a little strawberry. I think we'll have that one. Hit that side of the peas pretty good. This cabbage has definitely seen better days. The screen helps quite a lot with the peas. Strip back these strawberries pretty good. Oh, really got those peas. The hollyhock was just starting to recover. Hit some damage to the broccoli and cabbage. They were looking so pretty, I was gonna do a garden tour. Oh, poor rhubarb. Look what it did to the fabric. It just mutilated it. Look at the holes. Jeez. Banged up the tomatoes pretty good. Peppers are okay. Got the bunnies' radishes pretty good. It's alright, we'll pick a few and take them to their rabbits. She will be excited. I'm just letting these grow on for the rabbits at this point. Hey everybody, it is a terribly windy day and it's 100 degrees and smoke is in the air and I wasn't, didn't want to talk to the video, to talk to the camera too much because I know that it's going to be windy. So I uh, planted all the things that I got in town the other day on our trip. I've got zinnias, marigolds, snapdragons, impatience. That's it. <laughs> and the two sedum and the one daisy to fill in kind of to match the other side. So let me flip it and I'll show you guys. So here are the two new sedum and the new daisy to match the sedum and the daisy over there. I aligned the bricks all the way down with impatience. This got hailed. That is non-existent hailed. The cotton candy, uh, candy corn. Um, the berry poppins is struggling but might make it back. I planted these two out of the planter and the mum out of the planter. They were hail damaged. I did a little hail damage video on my Instagram about those. Okay, and then down here, I've got all kinds of new pretty plants. Don't mind my jug of water here. Okay, it looks so full and pretty compared to what it was before. In the back, I've got a mixture of the snapdragons, which were the tall ones, clear in the back. Two colors of those. There's a sedum here. Marigold, zinnias just kind of patched in in between. Impatience just scattered here and there. Poor fire and ice hostas are just got nailed the other day. Some little violas in the yellow. Gonna fill in really pretty eventually if we don't get any more severe weather. Hey y'all, another video in the wind. I am so sorry, but the wind just, it will not cooperate this year at all. Everything is always windy, always. Anyway, I, right now I am working on a hanging basket. This is it. It's one of those mosquito plants. I got it 75% off. I've always wanted to try one. 
because they claim that they keep the mosquitoes at bay where you put them and it is tripled in size. It loves its life. It hangs in the animal run opposite the other hanging basket. And I actually kind of think it really works. Um, the only places that this area really gets mosquitoes is anywhere where there's sitting water. And unfortunately that is ducks. And so far I have not had any mosquitoes and I've had less flies. It has a very strong smell to it. On the tag it claims that it was citrus, <laughs> but it's about as far from citrus as I can come up with. It is very pungent. But um, it is not the prettiest plant. It, I mean, it really isn't. It kind of looks like uh, weed to me. But I am going to add these vines to it that are recovering from hail damage. Lovely, huh? I have a couple more trailing ivy over on the table and I'm just going to add some to this basket because when it's hanging, let me see if I can hang it here somewhere. I'll hang it in the tree here. When it's hanging, all I see is the bottom and it's just, the bottom is not very pretty. So we're going to add some stuff to it to make it trail and hide this bucket a little more. Today is the day that the cedar tree in the yard is going. Um, we're gonna take it down. It's really, really sad actually because it is a hundred year old, possibly older tree um, that has been, been here a long time. And it will change how the yard looks and the shade and probably change how the wind hits the house. And I mean, just everything up here on the hill, like snowstorms will probably bank just a little bit different because this is a big tree and it does shield the house quite a bit. So this is the, the tree that we're talking about here that the storm, the big storm that bent the doors on the building took part of this tree. See, it's just missing a huge chunk, which we uh, cleared out right away because it was laying on, on the yard table, actually, when it fell. And it is quite rotten, unfortunately. Otherwise, we'd probably consider keeping just this part. But, I mean, it's just, it's just falling apart. Big tree, though. Beautiful big tree. But it is going today. So I wanted to give you kind of a before look. It's going to change how the how the yard looks. Significantly.
Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm working on an awesome project today. We are working on a wagon flower bed back here behind me. And I have, um, the wagon was from this ranch. And then it's been sitting in the yard for quite a while. I've been wanting to do this for over a year. But I always didn't know where I wanted to put it because where I wanted it was kind of under the old cedar tree. And things just don't grow well under cedar trees. So when the cedar tree came down, I decided, hey, let's get this done this year. I picked up some awesome plants off of the clearance rack and that I've been wanting and they were really cheap. They were like five bucks a piece and they're usually like 35 bucks a piece. So really exciting to get those in the ground. They've been waiting for this flower bed to go in for about a month and a half, two months now. So I have some shovel work to do to kind of lower the wheels because right now it's kind of sitting um, at strange angle because we put the dirt down and then rolled the wagon over it, but we had dirt path was bigger than the wagon wheel base. So I need to move a little bit of dirt and throw these plants in the ground. I'm expecting a thunderstorm here any minute. On the radar, it is looking pretty red and orange, but I gotta do what I can. It's the first day that it has not been 107 degrees blasting sunlight right here. My yard is dying without that tree. I mean, it wasn't that great to begin with, but it is really, really crispy because we are really dry. And that was the only shade I had here. And I think I must have had shade grass or grass. It never really was a beautiful lush yard, but what was here fried, like you can see, it is gone.
and there's just not an even amount of water I could pump on it to keep it alive. So we're gonna have to replant uh, some sun-loving grass at uh, next spring. But today I'm just gonna throw four bushes in this project. So here we go. So I've got three of these yellow flowering currant bushes. I love these. These um, grow naturally where I'm from. So I was really thrilled to find some that I could buy and put here because they're quite hard to transplant. But they're hardy. Uh, I do believe, I may be wrong, but I do believe the berries are toxic but they just give off the most beautiful smell in the spring and summer. It just feels like, it smells like home. So I bought three of those, but one under this wheel, one behind this wheel, and one in the front. The humidity level is rising so much it's getting hard to breathe. Doesn't really look like too serious, but it's getting kind of dark. The kitten has no idea this is not a playground yet, but we'll get there. So I got one under the tongue here, and they will fill in, get quite large with any luck. And then I've got a red twig dogwood here for a little winter interest, a little color, some bushiness, really excited about it. And then of course I've got all this stuff to pick up that's on top of the wagon. But we are started, so I'm gonna water these in real quick before it starts to storm and call it a day. So follow along for progress on this project. It'll probably take several months or even a year to fill it in uh, with flowers and pretty things. I'm kind of thinking roses, maybe yellow um, in the bush variety instead of the climbing. Maybe some natural things that are um, native to here like milkweed and we have some native flowers that are purple. They kind of look like salvia, but I'm not sure what they are. And then we have like, Maybe thistles, maybe sunflowers, just things that grow here naturally and kind of fill those in around the wagon. I kind of want it to look like the wagon kind of ran aground and got abandoned here, if that makes sense, in kind of a setup kind of a way. I don't know. It doesn't really make sense if you think about it, but it could be pretty. So that is what I'm going to try to do. Good evening everybody. I am out in the garden doing some light pruning, trying to exercise the grip in my right hand. Oh, sorry. Um, that swallowed my gum. Anyway, I am trying to do some light pruning on the tomatoes. Let me show you what I got going. So here is my tomato plant tank. I got a serious amount of weeds around y'all. I just haven't been weeding at all lately. But I am pruning back the bottoms of my tomatoes because I need to be able to see the stem and I need to have absolutely no branches and no leaves touching the dirt because then I get bacteria in my plants and they tend to do things like this. But they are way past when I should have been pruning them. 
I've even got some strange things going on, like this one decided to grow sideways, and it's growing clear across, and it's way over there in the tank. This one didn't come straight out the, the top of the um, cage because I was not training them. It came out the side, so I've got it hanging out the side of the tank. This one over here died. It's been a rough three weeks for me, y'all. I haven't been gardening at all, so we're dealing with what we have. This is all one tomato plant. Somewhere in here, I need to find the cage and get all of that taken out of there. I should be able to see the stem of the tomato if I have pruned my tomatoes correctly. And I can't even find it. It's back in there somewhere. So I got to work on that and cut some branches back here so that it is getting enough air in the middle. I don't even know what's going on over here because I haven't walked over here yet. I've just been working on these two. Right here. I just started right here. I got my kneeling pad and my clippers. And I'm just sorting this one out and I'm just kind of going through and seeing what's going on here. Because I've got some wilting, it's not getting enough water. But I've also got some grow back into the cage problems. Um, just because I haven't been paying attention. So this stem here comes out of the tomato, out of the cage. But then it curves and goes back. And it's coming out under the cage over here. But I have a tomato growing in between the bars of the cage. And I don't like to cut branches off that actually have tomatoes on them. But this might have to be an exception because I don't know how I'm going to get that out of there. See, let's tuck this under here and see what happens. It might break. Ah, oh, there we go. Now we got the branch. Okay, so this branch here is not actually growing any tomatoes. It goes back to here, so I'm going to cut it off. It's not flowering, it's not doing anything important. It's kind of actually quite wilty. So I'm going to go back here and cut it off. And that'll bring a little more air to the situation. I just think this is funny. This one here is growing down in to the cage. Pull it up. Just going to do some sorting out. Like this one, instead of going up, sits actually here in the middle. It went down. So we're going to pull it through as gently as possible. If I break a few, I break a few. It does need to be thinned out. A lot going on here. Some biting flies in the garden tonight. Okay, I think I got that one sorted out. So I'm just gonna go through now and just make sure that the main branches don't have a gazillion little starts on them so that everything can get enough air through it to breathe and that as many branches as possible are pointed in the right direction. So like right in here I've got this little bitty branch. I know you can't see through my hand. It's just right in the middle. If I took it out there'd be a little more room for everything to breathe. This one too is crossing all of the tomato plant. It's just stuck in there. I'm gonna pull it out. See, this was just wound around the middle. And after I pull it out, now I can see see the stem. I want to be able to see the tomatoes. It needs to get enough air around it that it can breathe. 
It needs to have enough water. I need to be able to see where the water level is. I need to be able to see for bugs. I want to be able to pick tomatoes. So that is what I am doing. I got to go around and do all the tomatoes. So that's it for today's video. Um, I hope you like my channel and that you're following. If you aren't following, please subscribe. Um, it helps my channel to get out to more people. Like, subscribe, follow, share, watch, all the things. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.